I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I think it's fantastic that you joined me today for episode number 248, How to Use Some Product for What If Scenarios. You'll have to excuse me for not posting a video for a while. I've been busy living the high life in North Idaho. Lots of bike riding, lots of spending time with my family, as well as helping some people become Quantrix masters outside of my YouTube channel. And if you have interest in uh, becoming a Quantrix master outside of just watching my YouTube videos and getting some one-on-one -on -one help, I do hope that you'll reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and we can enter into some sort of an arrangement or agreement where I can help you with your models. Nonetheless, I'm really happy to be back making a video for you on how to use some product for what-if scenarios. I did this the other day and I thought it was just totally rad uh, because I'm a big fan of some product. I think in that lesser program, also known as Excel, some product is really the function that rules all other functions. And in Quantrix, I would say that that's actually the select function. But there is also still some value in some product in Quantrix. I've done a couple videos on it, but I haven't done one quite like I'm going to do tonight where I show you how to do scenarios with it. I have here three matrices. Here I have a list of ingredients. And with those ingredients, you have the name of the ingredients. And then what I have listed are the lines that this ingredient is used on. And in the background, what I'm doing is I'm going out, I'm going out and uh, calculating the forecast demand for each one of these ingredients listed on each one of these individual lines. And now what I want to do is I want to find out what the total ingredient demand needs to be across all the facilities. Now I realize I could insert a summary item and get that to happen, but I want to have it be in its own individual matrix, and I want to be able to control whether or not in that summary matrix I have the Nauvoo line listed, the Zaporozhia line, or the Oak City line or a combination of the three. So how do I do that? Well, I've created another matrix. It's a listed here, the input parts, which is linked, this category is linked to the input parts here. And then I've created another matrix and I've drug over line to that. I have it right here, the line. So I have the line here in this matrix. And then what I do is I put ones and zeros for whether or not I want to include this number within the summary. And then I'm going to, in this summary formula, simply write a sum product function that goes something like this. So need is equal to sum product. What is the range I want to take? I want to take the ingredient need. And what is the range two that I want to take? I want to take the include flag right here of ones or zeros. And when I do that, it goes ahead and it summarizes the total amount. So if I were to go ahead and look at ingredient need here, I get 3939. That's what I'm seeing down here in the corner. That is what I'm seeing right here. If I were to look at lactic acid uh, or whatever that is, I guess acid lactic, there you go. Let's see if I can find that. That's 15,539. If I were to sum that, I get 15,539. But the beauty of this is is let's say I just wanted to see the uh, Zaporozhia and Oak City lines. I'd go ahead and change the include flag to zero or false here. And then what happens with my lactic acid? I should only expect to see Zaporozhia and Oak City. So that would be 9131. And that is what I see here, 9131. And that ha is happening because of I have simply used some product uh, as it was intended to be used, where you simply take all of this array and you times it by the next array, which in this case would be zero for Nauvoo, and for Zaporozhia would be this array times everything in this array, which would be one, so it would bring back itself, and also the same with Oak City line, and you perform the summary and you get your total number like that. So that is the sum product function and how you would use it to create some what if scenarios within Quantrix Modeler. Again, you can see my numbers fluctuating. If all of them were zero, well then indeed, 
they would all come back as zero. I absolutely love Quantrix. This type of stuff makes my day every day because I get to use it. And again, if you have any questions about Quantrix, I do hope that you'll reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com because I absolutely love Quantrix. I want to make you a Quantrix master. And I'm also available if you want to enter, enter into a long-term agreement to get some Quantrix help. I'm more than happy to help you with that. And please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez.